Okay guys, anybody that's been following my channel knows that I'm currently engaged in building one of these. Now I think today's project is going to be this little feature right here. Let's make the chain. Anybody can make round link chain, but I think these rectangular links are just a little bit cooler. So that's what I'm going to shoot for today. Get it? Shoot for? No pun intended. And this is a perfect opportunity to show you something that I've had in my toolbox for a while that I've been looking for a reason to show you. And it would be these guys right here. These were fabricated from half by one and a half low carbon ground stock. If you've ever needed to have a precision blank that you don't feel like grinding, well, low carbon ground stock comes ground. You can get it two size, a little bit oversized, whatever. But I tell you, it comes in real handy when you need something that's all matched. Now, these are inserts for my vice jaws. And it was real easy to make them. Just square them all up to the same size. Doesn't even have to be to the same size, but have a common, common surface that you can bank from. Squeeze it in another vise and put it in your regular milling vise at 45 degrees and run an end mill across it. There you go. Now you have four matched little inserts for your vise. And if you're going to be doing smaller stuff, well, put a smaller notch on the opposite side. The way these work is you stick them in your vise, and I'll show you this momentarily, and you squeeze them like little V-blocks. Two on this side, two on this side. And I'm going to pull this camera back so you can see that. And that just works so well in the vise, it's just uh, amazing the amount of access that this gives you to your part. You can cut the top, you can cut the back side, front side, you can make half rounds that are beyond center that you couldn't hold normally in a vise because naturally once you get beyond center, it pops out. So let's stick this in the mill, modify it a little bit, and we're going to show you exactly how that chain is going to happen. Stick around. This is the cross section that I'm looking to cut, and there's a reason for the round end, so just bear with. But that particular link size is what I want. I want an 80 by 160. It's uh, twice as tall as it is wide. I think it gives a good proportion. And those are just the contact and move points from the material. And using a 250 cutter, these are my centers. So let's take a look at how it's set up in the mill. And you can certainly see the advantage of having access to three sides of the part. The only thing you need to do when you're done is just rotate it accordingly to get your final feature and in you go. And since this is visual, I'm going to put a vertical Sharpie marker line right here. And when it's time to rotate it, I'm going to turn it 180 degrees until that line is straight back up. And I'm going to make my final cut. Let's stick this on a tripod, make it happen. All right, the first thing we have to do is to locate the cutter against the material. If you don't want to use an edge finder, and I certainly don't because it's a meatball part, I'm going to bring this end mill in until it makes contact with the edge of the material. At that point, raise your cutter up, move in the radius of your cutter. That puts the center of the cutter on the edge of the part, and now move in the radius of the part. And that puts the center of the cutter over the center of the part. And at that point you can make all moves symmetrical about that value. So let's start that and uh, turn this thing into a rectangle. See how fast it happens. edge contact. I'm going to move 125 to find the center of the cutter. That was my compressor. Now I'm going to move 156 to find the center of the material.
this will be a climb cut. I like the finish of a climb cut better. going to climb cut on a manual mill, snug the locks on your table so the cutter doesn't grab the workpiece. Now let's go to the back side of the same setting and come back. If you are concerned with deflection of your workpiece, you can do one side or the other first and stick a block in there because with a climb cut it is a rejection and it'll push, if this gets real thin, it'll push it up against your stop block and save you the hassle of having a part that varies between here, here and here because as it gets to the center it's going to push away, the cross section may increase. So Let's do the top, I need to take 76 thou off the top of this. Okay, those of you with headphones on, here comes a little bit of air. That was for you, Barry. Okay, I'm going to take my visual alignment mark I have here on the end, rotate the part 180 degrees, take the same cut on the back side. And I'm going to cover this up momentarily so these blocks don't lift when I rotate it. And I think that is close enough. 76 as well off the top. To, here comes one more air blast. Get this out of the way. I hit that real hard. It's going to look like a snowstorm with the center being all filled up like that. And I'd rather not do that. Watch the index mark. I'm going to turn this piece 90 degrees. or somewhere thereabouts close enough is good enough. Boy, that is small. You can see the noise in the part from the lack of support. At least I can. I'll move that to the camera closer. All right, let's change the tool, pop a hole in this. Okay, the part has been rotated 90 degrees, and I'm gonna pop a hole in this somewhere towards the other end. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to go between the blocks, stay in the full diameter of this material. Ah, 
I know, it's bouncing. Doesn't matter. And last but not least, I'd like to put some detail down the center of this. And you'll see why that happens. Bear with me. This is an 060 diameter ball nose end mill. And I want to put a trough right down the wide side. This, see what happens. Okay, air blast warning. Here we go. Let's open that up, take a look. Here's the final product. It is 80 thou wide, 160 tall. Sharp corners. There is an 060 wide ball nose trough down the center of that. It's about 50 deep. And right now I'm going to take it over to the buffer and I'm going to buff the corners off of this. Make it round. Rounder. Alright, guys, this is my deburring wheel of choice for just about all materials. This is a hard Scotch Brite fiber type wheel. It is not very flexible. This is the wheel that, that does all the polishing after the fact if you want to blend out any kind of lines. But if you want to cut your part down, this is a great wheel to, uh, to use. So since I can't hold this camera and do this at the same time, I'm just going to edge hit this on here at a 45 degree visual and then buff it on the pink wheel on the opposite side and that should give me what I want. I just want those sharp edges to go away. Okay, the edges have been rounded off smoothed off a little bit off camera I now popped a center drill hole in this and maybe the lights going on for some of you but we're gonna pop this in the lathe hold this in a collet put a support center out here and show you something pretty cool okay guys this is now set up in the lathe and I'm gonna use 20 gauge brass wire to do this I'm gonna thread it through the cross hole that we put in the arbor in the first place turn the machine on incredibly slow and I'm going to let it coil around that rectangular cross section that we just formed in the mill. Now when you do this, if you do this, realize that this is not a good idea uh, that if you're on an incredibly high speed on your lathe that that six foot worth of brass wire hanging out is a giant weed whacker and can do a considerable amount of damage. So confirm that your machine is in the slowest possible speed and that there are no loops or hooks formed into the wire. I've done this before, so I know what to expect, but please realize if you want to try this, don't use a six foot piece of wire to start. Use a six inch piece of wire to start an experiment, but uh, I do have some experience with this, so please be careful when you try it. Let's see what happens. My machine is set at 30 RPM. It's going to take a turn or two before this starts to track the way I hope it will. And keep your coils nice and tight as they wind around that arbor and your end product should be just what you're hoping to see. So let's find out. Leather gloves would probably be a very good idea. The 
more resistance you put on this wire, the tighter those little coils are going to be. See, that's a win. I really hope that stayed in focus the whole time. I do not have a monitor to look at as this is happening. What we've effectively just done, the arbor was the internal cross section of the link and wrapping the brass wire around it like that formed the outside of the link. The little trough that we put in this arbor is going to be clearance for the nose of the little nippers that I'm going to use to separate these links. And then I'm going to have to get a cup of coffee and sit for a while and bend them all together. So let's get this thing out of here. And unfortunately, this is a sacrificial arbor. I am going to saw cut this off right there. This end chunk was just for support. I'm sure that if you're going to do this on a regular basis that you could put a center right in this rectangular piece. But I didn't feel like doing that this morning, so I'm not going to. But I will not damage the arbor except for cutting that end off, so I can use it again if I need to. Let's go over to the saw, saw this thing off, chop a few links off, and show you what this will ultimately look like. Well, there is no doubt in my mind that when you cut these links, the memory of this material, the link is going to deform as it comes off. If you want to avoid that, gently tap this surface with a soft mallet or put it in a vise or whatever, but be careful how hard you squeeze it. You don't want to transfer the shape of these links into this arbor because then it's going to be a real dog to get off. But I am going to do that. That's, I'm not going to waste anybody's time doing it. I'll probably use the corner of the vise and just pinch it gently and then rotate it and pinch it gently again to establish a little bit harder corner than what I have here because I know this is going to open up when I cut these off. So I'll do that and I'll cut a few off and put them together. Let's take a look. Okay, I bumped the parts gently in the vise, gave it a little bit more of a flatter profile. And I'm going to go right down the middle with the snippers and hopefully these links fall off. So, let's see if I can look around the camera to do this with any kind of success. I gotta look through a magnifier, guys. I'm gonna come back to this after I've clipped these off. I'll show you what I got. Okay, I think you can see that that particular process yields a tremendous amount of links here. And that's way more than I have the patience to put this together uh, right now. But I bent a few up. And there you go. So that will be the ornamental chain for my cannon. I think I would have liked a little bit thicker wire, but this was all I could find at the time. And maybe next time a little different cross section, maybe something with points on the end so that when you squeeze it, it tracks a little bit better. But there you go. That's how you make chain. At least that's how I make chain. Anybody got a better idea or a quicker process? By all means, make a video. I'd love to see it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care.